So let's recap our study of the coupon collector's problem. The problem says that we're given balls in some colors and we have infinitely many of each and we're gonna make successive iterations of drawing the balls and we're gonna stop as soon as we get all three balls occurring. Okay, we've thought about, well, we can divide this up into a success event, which is where we get a new color. And we're gonna think about, okay, I know what the expectation is, how many draws I expect to, it to take. If I already have K colors, here I've already got two colors, and how many draws do I expect until I get my new success? That's this value here. And then we're able to add all of those up to say how many draws will it take until I get N successes. So we computed this last time, and we found that it's roughly N log N. And we know that for the example for n equal three, this is exactly five and a half or roughly 3.3. So we're gonna ask a slightly different question next. The question we're gonna ask is the following. How many draws until I almost certainly have a full set? So this is a different question, right? I'm, I'm not saying what's the average. I'm not saying, okay, a million people are gonna draw these and what's the average length of time it takes. I'm saying I really, really, really wanna set how many balls do I have to draw so that I almost certainly get a set? Suppose you're collecting chocolate frogs, or sorry, you're collecting wizard cards from chocolate frogs, then you wanna know how many chocolate frogs do I have to eat to make sure that I get every wizard, okay? So if we're gonna start doing this, we're gonna start with a probability. Probability of what? Well, it's usually easier to say the probability that I fail to do something. So let's suppose we never get Dumbledore, or let's say the ith color, and we need to know in how many trials, okay? In N draws. So what is this probability? The probability that I've drawn N times and I never got green, okay? We can figure this out. This isn't so bad. It's just gonna be one minus don't get the one card. So this is saying not the ith color. And then we do this N times. So the probability of not getting the ith color is one over one minus n. n is the number of colors I have, and we do it n times, okay? So that's great. We wanna do some analysis on this. And so we're gonna do some analysis. We really like to bound things to make the math work out easier. This is sort of the same art that we have for delta epsilon proofs. This is sort of what happens in analytic combinatorics. So I'm once again gonna have a lemma that's gonna help me out here. The lemma that I'm gonna use this time is I'm gonna approximate one plus x, I'm gonna actually bound it by e to the x. This is actually a pretty good bound when x is small. And let me just point out that what this tells us when x is small, like for example, x is minus one over n, this says that I can approximate that and bound it by e to the minus one over n. Okay, that's exactly what I'm gonna use here. So I'm gonna say this is at most e to the minus n over a little n. Awesome. So now, just like when you do a delta epsilon proof, the first time you work it through, you're just sort of guessing um, at things. And the next time you already know what the answer is, so you know what to pick for your delta. So I'm gonna do the same sort of thing here. I'm gonna say, let's let capital N, the number of draws, equal twice the expectation. So this is twice the expect expectation. So remember that we thought that on average, it should take me five and a half draws. So I'm saying, okay, suppose I take 11 draws, right? What's the probability that I'm gonna succeed? That's what I wanna see. And I came up with this by working the problem out in advance, but you could set this to be any other parameter that you want. It's usually good to have it in terms of the expectation because you know you wanna take more than the expected number if you want things to be really likely to happen. The expectation is the 50% chance, right? So we wanna take something bigger so that we get this almost certainly, okay? So that's what I've done here. So what does that mean? Well, that means that this is actually equal to, when I plug in this value here, this is gonna be equal to e to the minus two n log n divided by n. And of course, I can simplify that. So this is just, well, um, the n's here and here are gonna cancel each other out and I get e to the minus two log n. So the log and the e cancel and I'm just gonna get one over n squared. That's nice. That's something I can really get my hands busy with. So let's see if we can get our probability to work out now. So I never get, never get i for some i. 
So what's the difference in these two probabilities? This probability up here is I specifically Dumbledore. I never get Dumbledore. Here is there's some wizard that I never get. Well, there's some wizard I can never get is less than or equal to the probability, well, the sum over all possible wizards I could get. So this is going to be i equals 1 up to n of that probability right up here. Okay, well, we've just bounded that. So this is less than or equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over n squared, because that was the bound that we just worked out. But now just I'm summing from i equal 1 to n. There's no i over here anymore. So I just have it n times. So this is just equal to n times 1 over n squared, which of course is 1 over n. So what do we conclude? So the probability that I get all colors in 2n log n draws, this is what I've just computed because I've specified the 2n log n draws. This is at least, because the probability of failure is at most something, the probability of success is at least that, at, mo at least 1 minus the probability of failure, which of course goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. So the conclusion is that yes, I'm almost certainly going to do it. So if I take this n equal 3 cases and I, I do 11 draws, right, then two-thirds of a chance I'm going to get everything in 11 draws. But as the number of colors, the number of cards goes up, this of course is going to 1, so it's almost certainly going to happen. And then we can make that more precise, but this is really where we're going to stop with the discrete combinatorics.